Hello, my name is Reverend Dr. May Elise Cannon. Today is Monday, February 26th. Today is the 143rd day since October 7th. I'm here in Washington, D.C. yesterday afternoon on Sunday, an active duty member of the United States Air Force, identified as Aaron Bushnell, set himself on fire in front of the Israeli embassy, stating, I will no longer be complicit in genocide. He reportedly died from his injuries after being treated by a nearby hospital, and the incident sparked an investigation by local police and the Secret Service. This act comes amid ongoing protests against the war in Gaza. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Our prayers go out to the family of Aaron Bushnell. Hostage negotiations continue um, today. Uh, on Monday, Israeli officials headed to Qatar, where Hamas has its political office, to work on the terms of a Gaza truce and hostage release deal. It's believed that there could be up to 100 additional hostages still alive in Gaza. Um, a source said that the Israeli working delegation is made up from staff from the military and the Mossad spy agency, and that they have been tasked with creating an operational center to support negotiations. Um, Israel has expressed that they are still determined to continue their plans for a full-scale invasion into Rafah, the southernmost city in Gaza. And their military presented the war cabinet with a plan for evacuating the population from areas of fighting in the Gaza Strip and with the upcoming operational plan. That's from a statement from Prime Minister Netanyahu's office. Israel has threatened to launch a full-blown attack on the city of Rafah, which is the last city at Gaza's southern edge, despite international objections, including from Washington, D.C. Um, Netanyahu has promised total victory, saying an operation in Rafah is necessary to root out the four battalions of Hamas fighters that are based there. Human Rights Watch has said that humanitarian aid um, in response to the crisis in Gaza is woefully inadequate, um, stating that the Israeli government has failed to comply with the order of the United Nations top court, the International Court of Justice, in providing urgently needed aid to the desperate people of the Gaza Strip. The Israeli government is starving Gaza's 2.3 million Palestinians, putting them in even more peril than they had before the world's the World Court's binding order, said Omar Shakir, the Israel and Palestine Director of Human Rights Watch. The Israeli government has simply ignored the court's ruling and in some ways has even intensified its repression, including further blocking life-saving aid. Um, the ICJ last month ordered Israel to follow six provisional measures, including taking immediate and effective measures to enable the provision of urgent, urgently needed basic services and humanitarian assistance, to address the adverse conditions of life that are faced by Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. And Human Rights Watch said that Israel was not only not adhering to the court's order, but they cited a 30% drop in the daily average number of aid trucks entering into Gaza in the weeks following the court's ruling. Human Rights Watch said that Israel was not adequately facilitating fuel deliveries to North Gaza, and they blamed Israel for blocking aid from reaching the North, where the food uh, World Food Program said last week it was forced to suspend aid deliveries because of increasing chaos in um, the isolated part of the territory. Um, other aid agencies have said that Gaza's um, humanitarian needs are only being met. About 10% of the humanitarian needs are being met. Um, last week, there were additional airdrops by Jordan, and for the first time, the UK sent in humanitarian assistance via Jordanian airdrops. And when we met in January with the Jordanian Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister um, Safadi a few weeks ago, he was very clear, as have been the other Arab states, that the primary priority has to be a comprehensive ceasefire and an end to the bombing campaign and the ground invasion in Gaza. The only way humanitarian access will be able to be adequately met and provided is for the conditions to be safe, which will be provided by a ceasefire. Um, Palestinian Prime Minister Mohammed uh, Shatiya submitted his resignation to President Mahmoud Abbas today in a step towards post-Gaza war overhaul. Um, Shatiya, another um, official we met with in January, is an academic um, economist. He took office in 2019. He said he was resigning to allow for the formation of a broad consensus among Palestinians about political arrangements 
Following Israel's war in Gaza, the U.S. and Arab allies have been seeking to revitalize the governing body with the hope that it can take a role in Gaza following the war. You know, this is the revitalization of the Palestinian Authority, kind of paving room for the possibilities of a unity government. Yesterday, on Sunday, the Association of the Rape Crisis Centers in Israel submitted the first formal report on sexual assault in the October 7th um, attacks. The findings in the report reveal patterns of sexual violence at four different sites on the attacks of October 7th, indicating a meth uh, uh, methodical and deliberate attack with highly sadistic characteristics. Um, the hope of the Association of the Rape Crisis Centers is that the findings would be received and reverberate around the globe to help address the, what they're calling the conspiracy of silence and the denial of sexual violence that was perpetrated on October 7th, um, and also increasing pressure to free the hostages. Um, there's a link uh, to that report online. Uh, it does contain graphic descriptions of sexual abuse, uh, torture, and murder. There are also updates coming from the old city of Jerusalem, the Armenian quarter situation, where um, a quarter of the Armenian quarter was um, sold, many believe, illegally uh, in a land sale agreement. According to Haaretz, ancient documents may actually void the sale of the last open land in Jerusalem's old city. Jerusalem residents are protesting the real estate deal for the last open space, um, which Ottoman era documents show was intended to benefit the Armenian community. So an Armenian activist involved in the case is quoted as saying that the claim is a milestone in protecting in protecting the assets of the Armenian community in Jerusalem, that the documents filed are intended to prove that the Armenian gardens is the property of all of the members of the community, and the land is in an endowment property, um, meaning that the deal that was signed between the Patriarchate and Zena Gardens is therefore null and void. And that's a Haaretz article, if you're interested in learning more. And in northern Lebanon, along the Syrian border, Israel mounted airstrikes west of the Lebanese city of Baalbek on Monday, killing two Hezbollah members, according to Reuters. Um, this is unusual because this is not on the south border of Lebanon. This is actually north, uh, north um, uh, of Beirut. Um, the Israeli military said that it was striking Hezbollah targets deep within Lebanon, and it provided no further details. Hezbollah said that it had shot down um, a drone, an Israeli drone, over Lebanese territory. Death tolls in Gaza are at at least 29,782 Palestinians killed, and the injury toll is now at 70,043 from Israeli strikes and attacks on Gaza since October 7th. In the last 24 hours, 90 Palestinians were killed and 164 have been injured in Israeli airstrikes. Um, I have been um, devastated by that news, but encouraged by people around the world from Scranton, Pennsylvania to Perth, Australia, um, who have participated in Gaza ceasefire pilgrimages just in the last several days. I'd encourage you to check out Instagram and social media to watch the videos and the prayers and the cries and the chants of people literally around the world who have been walking um, this Lent calling for a ceasefire together.